Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Traven's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Flagstaff Superlight 26 RLBS travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, you have plenty of room for that awning to come in now. And, and of course, over here on your off campsite, beside your slides, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power is going to plug all the way back here on your rear corner of your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. And your docking station is going to be toward the front, just behind your front slide. That's where you plug in your water at the campsites. So once you arrive, got a good parking spot to utilize all the facilities. First thing you do after unhooking your hitch is level your unit. Do you got a power tongue jack comes with a night docking light should you arrive at night simply lower or raise the unit to your level now some chance you happen to lose power there's a little hand crank right there that will get this up and down without power speaking of power check your battery post when you arrive make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time once we got our unit level next thing we're going to do is stabilize it all four corners of the unit you're equipped with power stabilizing jacks as I hit extend, I'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of these stabilizing jacks. These may have to adjust down to make sure they go down flat. Good investment, use your 10% off coupon, grab a four pack, throw them down, and just run these stabilizing jacks down until they're taut. Once you feel like you're starting to lift the unit, go ahead and stop. Because remember, our unit's already level, we just want to stabilize it. We run two down in the front. Show your rear ones back here. And we on this end. Same thing, running them down just until they're taut. Once we get our unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. Big long 50 amp cord comes on this unit. New pistol grip. They'll go in. Turn it to the right and then put on your black washer. At the end of that 50 amp service, should you need to plug into a 30 amp, in your convenience pack will be this dog bone that'll bring you from 50 down to 30, and also a 30 down to 15 amp should you need to plug into a 110 somewhere. All right, you got your power hooked up, let's hook up your water. At the campsites, you will hook up two city water connections. Grab your water pressure regulator, hook that up, hook up your hose. But don't turn your hose on yet come right down here to your hot water heater looks like that close and just make sure your drain plugs back in you may have left it out last time you were out camping get that back in there use plumbers tape not putty putty will gum up on you get that in there nice and tight with an inch and an eighth socket once that's in there tight you can go ahead and turn that hose on now you're just level and stable we can go inside and deploy our slides what i need you to do is get inside and open up your water taps Get all the air flowing out of the lines, get a nice steady flow of water, shut them off, and then you'll know that your hot water heater is full and you can turn that on, on from indoors. If your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, come out here and look to see if these are bubbled up. If they are, simply press them back in, they are a reset. Now let's say we're gonna go camping, we're not gonna use city water, we're gonna go dry camping or boondocking as they like to call it. 
Yours is going to be located on the campsite toward the front of the unit. No need for a water pressure regulator here. Simply use a hose. Two ways to tell when this is full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the level of your battery and black and gray tanks. There's also a fresh water button. Don't leave this unattended while filling it. Once it is full, once you want to use that uh, water, you will turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when utilizing the city water that's already pressurized. All right, we're all set to camp now. We're powering water. I'm going to go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit starting here on the front. Your propane does come with a cover. Then a regulator. It'll be lefty-loosey to open. means you've got gas. You also have a battery disconnect down here underneath your propane that will disconnect all the battery power to the unit that'll come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector on your off camp side docking light big storage here here's your table that'll set up outside with your griddle I'll show you that when we get to the other side back up here in your docking station you've got cable and satellite your tank flush we'll discuss that when dumping our black and gray tanks satellite here antifreeze inlet your city water again your hot water heater down below that your black and gray holding tanks and then under this slide you're going to have an extra galley tank which would be easier to dump when this is closed big outdoor storage area here again your power back here you got a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams of your roof, look for any dry, any cracking, and caulk with recommended RV roofing caulk. You're also prepped for a backup camera. Device you can purchase from our store. It sets on the dash of your tow vehicle, electronically communicating with this device, giving you a backup camera for the unit. Spare tire with a nice hard cover. Keeps it from dry rotting. An outdoor shower with hot and cold water. Your 751, or your master key will fit on that. Again, your rear stabilizing jacks. More storage. Up above there is a vent for your microwave. Below that is a flue for your furnace. Two things on that, make sure it's never blocked. And if you are running your furnace, steer clear of it, it does get hot. Now in this lip here is where you have a table and you also have a stand and a griddle that'll connect out here. Quick connect LP is right there cable and 110 and put a TV out here there's your mount for your TV with a couple of outdoor speakers and a porch light continue down your campsite your freshwater drain can be right there again your freshwater fill and your stabilizing jacks well covers everything out here Let's go take a look on the inside. Coming into a unit, first thing I'd like to point out to everyone is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone is camped with you knows the fire extinguisher is located in the entry doorway. Coming straight ahead as we come in, here's going to be your control panel. I'll start up top with this TPMS notice, tire pressure monitoring, uh, monitoring system. I'll send you a separate video specifically from TST telling you how to use that. This whole unit, awning, slide outs, and lights can be controlled by an app. Go to the Google Play or your app store and get the Lippert One Control app. You sit outside and run your slides in and out. Really nice system. Below that, Wi-Fi Ranger. Below that, here's where you check the levels of your battery. Your fresh, black, and gray tanks. I'm testing them right now. Over here is where you turn on your water heater hooked to electric. Your water heater hooked to gas. Here's where you turn on your water pump. Here's where you turn on your tank heater. Slides in and out. Your awning. On your awning. I want to show you, you only want to run that awning out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see the bar. If you're not watching them, they will continue to run themselves out and run themselves up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you're running out. Make sure that you don't run it out further than you need to. This is where you turn that Wi-Fi booster on. There's a step, awning, and porch lights, and your interior lights. 
Get that awning rest way in. And we'll continue the tour. So there's your stand and griddle. Behind the stand and griddle here on your little island peninsula is going to be your access panel to your breaker box and fuses. There are straps for strapping these chairs down for travel. Make sure you get them snapped in there good. And around here you'll have a 32 inch insignia TV. Uh, AM FM Bluetooth stereo here with indoor, outdoor, and uh, bedroom speakers. Continuing into the kitchen here. Self-explanatory microwave. You have a light and fan above your cooktop. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light, turn this to high, hit your spark and there's your flame. Rock that panel light down for an oven light. Same thing on the oven, turn this to light, spark it down here and then just set it to the desired temperature. No need for a pilot light anymore. Back here in the corner, your little pop up USB port and power, we like to call them a power port. Kind of stay like that till you push it in that red. Change your sofa into a bed here real quick. Simply remove your Velcro cushions. Lift up on the front. Hold your legs out. Back cushion down. And just say quickly, you got another sleeping quarters. Just make sure when putting this away, you lift it back up first, otherwise you could really damage your bed. Or sofa. And just that quickly, we're back to a sofa. Over here next to your sofa, down the bottom, 110 USB and your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. Reason I mention that's 12 volts, always running off your battery. So if you are out boondocking, dry camping somewhere, nothing plugged in charging your battery, and you're gonna be gone for the day, use that battery disconnect up front to keep this from running your batteries down while you're gone. Again, your recliners here, parachute pull there. Coming over to your Dometic fridge. Controls are right in the back there. This is your GP electric solar power controller. What this does is it keeps your solar pa panels from overcharging your battery. I have another separate video specifically from GP electric on that. Here's our thermostat. Let's go ahead and turn on your air Oops, system. Cool. There we go, crank the air up. Now you'll notice when I shut the air off, your AC will shut off rather quickly. Now have your system turn the heat, turn the furnace on. And you'll notice now when I turn the furnace off, that it takes a few minutes, there it goes. When I shut the furnace off, it's gonna take a few minutes for the furnace fan to cycle through before shutting off. Back into our bathroom. I wanna mention here, 110 with GFCI reset. And make sure that when you are traveling, you have these doors snapped closed. A little plumbing to maintain underneath here, access panel. Just peep in there now and then, make sure nothing's wiggled loose. Lighting, hand crank open. Power exhaust vent here, four different speeds or off. 
Um, again, for travel, make sure that your bathroom door is snapped open. Bathroom slash bedroom. Coming into your bath bedroom, just want to mention you do have storage underneath here, accessible from outdoors with your drawers. 110 USB ports. Uh, this lighting, if you touch it once, becomes a blue light. Well, I guess these ones don't. These are all white. If you happen to want to put an extra AC back here, this is prepped for it. And that's the sensor location for the text. So keep that sticker on there. And that about covers everything on the inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. I like to start by coming in and shutting off my interior lights from my control panel. Because then I can walk around and see any individual lighting that I need to shut off by hand. Now I walk through and make sure all my lighting's off except for what I can control for my control panel. I'm going to save doors and drawers. Go through the unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede your slides from coming in. And your chairs are down. Strap down. Every door and drawer closed. Let me do that real quick for you. Now right, we're going to come to our control panel. Just slide one in. Again, these utilize every inch they can, so make sure that you get everything out of your way. I want you to hear that noise. It's okay to hear that. That is just the slide mechanism telling itself not to come in any further. And kind of a reminder to yourself to go ahead and stop pushing the button. I like to leave that door cracked. I bring that slide in just so I know I've left nothing in the way. I can see if it stops for any reason. All right, slides are in. Door secure. Lights are off. Make sure I've shut off all my exterior lights. step light now the biggest thing on these steps folks is you want to make sure this exterior door is all the way open before lifting this otherwise this could catch on it kind of lifts on its own set that right inside before you leave the dump station make sure you lock and deadbolt your exterior door and lift and turn this handle if we are out boondocking we're going to get up underneath here, pull that freshwater drain. If we are dry camping, if we are at a campsite, we're going to unhook our power, our water, and our cable. We're going to bring up all of our stabilizing jacks, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. Now at the dump station, park accordingly. You're going to have two dumps. you got to Black and gray up here, and your extra gray tank back there. 10 foot hose comes to your convenience pack. Hook that up, and first thing we're gonna pull is that black handle, the one there on the left. Now you can go inside and check your panel to see if it's empty, or you can listen for it to be empty. Once it is empty, leave that black handle open. Grab your water pressure regulator and come up here to this tank flush. Grab the hose at the dump station. Again, a reminder, with your black handle open, Hook that hose up and let that run for a good five minutes. That's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, remove that hose. Make sure all that washout has drained. Then close your black and pull this gray handle. That's going to be cleaner water as your sinks and your showers. When that one's empty, close that handle, remove that hose, and come back here and dump this extra galley tank. Hook up again and pull that hose. 
Now while that one's draining, we're gonna go ahead and find our low point drains. We'll dump these low point drains right up here next to your gray tank. Once them are done, we're gonna open up our hot water heater again. We're gonna lift up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna dump a bunch of hot water out of there. When that's done, you can go ahead and pull that drain plug. Make sure you put your hot water heater door back on. Come back around here and make sure that gray tank is done. Come on back here and make sure that gray tank is done. There it is, unhook it. Come up here and conveniently and sanitarily store that sewage hose right here in your bumper. Again, thank you so much for your purchase. We hope you guys enjoy this Flagstaff for many years to come. Happy camping.